Hey guys, Emma here. Just wanted to let you know that this video is one segment from my much more in-depth course on coping skills and self-care. The course is on udemy.com and there's a link in the description with a coupon code where you can get a massive discount. So if you want to learn more coping skills or ways to manage your emotions when they're really intense, check out the link in the description. Okay, back to the video. Emotions are intense. Emotions are beautiful. Emotions are what make us feel alive. But emotions can also be scary, overwhelming, painful, exhausting, and sometimes even seem unbearable. When we're feeling highly emotional, the thinking part of our brain tends to shut down. Whether we're being swept away in love or carried away in anger, emotions can make us all act a little stupid. But that doesn't mean that emotions are bad. Feeling joy and sadness is what connect us to others. Feeling stress and pride help us be productive. Feeling fear can help us take action to be safe. Emotions serve as powerful motivation to take action and engage with life. But often these emotions can be overwhelming. When emotions run high, it's essential to know how to calm yourself down, to start thinking clearly and make good choices with your actions. Every section of this course teaches strategies to cope with your emotions by using your senses, practicing relaxation, or using temporary distraction as a tool. And I would call these backdoor approaches, turning on your calming response without directly addressing emotions. This section is going to focus on a short-term emotion coping skills, where we'll discuss how to face and feel emotions in a healthy way. Allowing yourself to express your emotions without frantically trying to avoid them lets you work through them slowly, carefully, and wholeheartedly. Later in this course, in the section on self-care, we'll dive into some longer-term strategies to keep you out of the rough patches, and you'll learn some strategies to process through and resolve emotions. But for this section, we're going to focus on the short-term coping skills to help get you through the rough patches. Here's an example from one of my friends. My husband works for the Children's Justice Center as a program coordinator, and as part of his job, he has the heavy task of listening, watching, and transcribing all interviews when an allegation of abuse against a child is made. As you can imagine, that takes a lot out of him. On days that he has had a particularly difficult interview, he comes home and picks up a paintbrush. He loves making fun works of art for our kids and anyone that he thinks could use a boost that day. It's his release. He channels his feelings from the day into his art and turns them into something amazing. Here are some examples of emotion coping skills. Do a brain dump. See the exercise in the next video. Talk with a friend or someone who's not involved. Journal about it. Write frequently about what's going on and take the time to explore it. Tell a cat or pet anything you're feeling and even tell them the worst thing you've ever done. His calm reaction may help you feel reassured that you're okay. Go someplace that you feel safe and allow yourself to cry. Write a song, poem, or short story expressing how you feel. Take a moment to give yourself some credit. Notice and write down some of the hard things you've done that day. Give yourself some credit for the little successes like getting out of bed, checking something off your to-do list, staying calm in a tough situation, etc. Practice mindfulness or meditation. You could use the app Stop, Breathe, and Think. Pray. Reach out to a higher power. Read sacred or inspirational text. Write a list of things that you are grateful for. Express emotion through art or music. Paint quickly, focusing on the color. Use clay to shape your feelings abstractly. Create a playlist of songs that express your emotions. For example, a sad day playlist or an angry playlist. Play an instrument. You can choose a song that matches your emotions. Sing it out to a song that expresses how you feel. Or use an app like Mooditude or Insight Timer to track your emotions. Check in with yourself throughout the day and take a moment to process your emotions and thoughts instead of letting them build up. Take a few minutes before bed to pay attention to your feelings. Write about them or draw a mind map and notice the different parts. You may have a proud part of you and an angry part at the same time. Take a minute to acknowledge each of your parts and listen to them. Give them a minute to be heard. Then remind yourself that it's okay to feel and everything's going to be all right. 
Okay, so I've given you a couple of ideas of how to practice emotion coping skills. In the next section, we're going to talk about going in through the back door and calming our brain by using sensory coping skills.